Hey fam and welcome back to I Love Me Me. So for those of you who are finding my channel for the very first time, my name is Marshawn and I'm your life and relationship strategist. I help men and women alike to create the relationship that they so want, need, and desire by giving them simple strategies and tips to implement into that relationship that they want to create. So now today we are going to talk about social media and how to date in this age of social media right after this. All right, fam, thanks for coming back. So we are going to talk about how to date in the age of social media. I have about seven tips for you guys, so we're going to go ahead and jump in. The very first thing that you guys need to do is, I know that this seems so trivial, but some of you guys be out there showing all the way out, which is do not put all of your dating woes, good, bad, happy, sad, everything that's going on in your dating and relationship on social media. Don't do it because people like me, yes, I be looking for it sometimes, but not all the time. <laughs> sometimes it be looking for me because it crawls across my screen, meaning you have had a great time with this guy or with this girl. And in three weeks, you talking about a new damn girl or a new damn guy. Or you get pissed off and you like, what would you do if Johnny was on the phone with blah, 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 blah. You asking all these questions, but you still there. Don't make yourself look crazy. That's all I'm saying. Don't make yourself look crazy by putting all of your junk on social media. You giving them the ammunition to talk crap about you. And then you mad when people talk crap about you. You don't realize that you're doing it to yourself? Because if you keep all of your stuff off of social media, then you aren't giving nobody nothing to talk about. And especially when things are going bad because somebody looking like, oh, I told you so. He ain't no damn good anyway or she ain't no damn good anyway. So I don't even know why he over there talking crap about it because he's still going to be there. you giving all these people ammunition to talk crap about your stuff. So don't put all your stuff, all your crap, good, bad, happy, sad. Don't put all of it on social media. Keep some of that stuff private. Yes, I want to celebrate you when things are going good. That's cool. But I don't need to read all your stuff. And you shouldn't want other people to know all your business. Because the only person that can help you is the person that you're talking trash about. Another thing, something that we didn't have to talk about in my generation. But I know in this generation, in the age of technology, in the age of social media, this is something that we have to bring up, which is when you are on a date or you are in the company of the other person, especially when they are trying to have a conversation with you face to face. Put down your dog on phone. Take your eyes off your computer. Take your eyes off of that game. Whatever it is that has you sucked into a virtual world instead of the world that is right in front of you. That is the thing that you don't need to be looking at. So I said phone, but it could be your iPad, it could be your computer, it could be your TV, it could be any damn thing that's taken away from the date or from you guys just hanging out and have a blissful one-on-one -on -one interaction and not virt virtual interaction. So put down your phone, especially when you're out on a date. And expect. And I'm, I'm sure some of you guys can actually understand what I'm saying, which is... When I go out on a date with my husband, and sometimes I'll notice that other couples at other tables, everybody is everybody is locked in. And they doing their own thing. And then when a waiter or waitress comes, they got to look up from the phone. Instead of look up from the person that's across from them, they looking up from their phone. Nobody's interacting. Nobody is engaging. Nobody is connecting. And yes, I know that this is not everybody, but I need you guys to be aware aware of what you're actually doing out on all of these dates connect with the person that's in front of you that stuff that's on social media is still going to be there that person that needs to text you in the moment that message will still be there even if it is an emergency the emergency is probably still going to happen probably still be occurring when the date is over all I'm saying is try to give that person your undivided attention so you can really see if you actually like this sucker that's sitting across, the, <laughs> sitting across the table from you versus you like their appearance, but that's where it stops. There's no conversation, no way to connect, nothing in common. And so you don't even know if they have the red flags that you should be looking for because 
you haven't talked to them. You don't know what they're trying to say or not. You don't know if their emotional state is healthy. You don't know if their spiritual state is healthy. You don't even know if their damn financial state is healthy. And on your first couple dates, and actually for a while, you shouldn't even know that anyway. But you get my drift. If it comes up, then let's talk about the conversation. But you get my drift. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's actually happening. You don't know how the person is feeling because you're not talking to them. Because you're here versus here. Another thing about social media and dating, which online dating, I talked about online dating actually in my Sunday video. So online dating is really not dating at all. So let me just clarify for you. Online dating is a precursor to see if you even want to meet up with the other person outside of online, outside of your household. household. It's a precursor for it. So you're flirting on there. As I mentioned in my last video, you guys are conversing via going back and forth email. Maybe you even have gotten offline, but you're still texting, not even talking on the phone. You're only texting. So you're still online. At some point, ladies and gentlemen, you have to get off of your phone, make the date, go out on the date. So after you guys have been chatting for a period of time, and this could be with, within three weeks, because things come up, they might have been out of town for the most, within three weeks, especially depending on what's going on, right? But really, that first week, y'all like, oh, oh, this is cute, well, whatever, right? Second week, starting to build up more momentum. Third week, if they have not made a date within third week, within the three-week period, guess what? They are there to waste your time. They are. If they had, do not have the urgency to meet you outside of just texting, then maybe they are just looking for a text buddy. Somebody to make them feel good when the um, phone buzzes, they get in their adrenaline rush and their, um, and their endorphins are flowing. They like, let me get it, let me, let, let me just get it. Who's on the other line? I'm feeling important and everything. That is the only thing they're doing after a period of time. They're really not looking for a date and definitely not looking for a relationship. They just like the attention that you are giving them for the moment. So after a three-week period, depending on what's going on in their life, but really after three weeks and y'all talking, y'all conversing, they ain't made no date. They don't plan on it. Move on with your life. Stop answering. Stop giving them their endorphin rush and find somebody else who actually wants to meet in person to see if y'all do have a connection. Because I meant, as I mentioned before, time is the only thing that we cannot get back. Everybody's time is precious. And nobody wants our time to be wasted. So you have to be aware of the things that's going on, especially in the age of technology. People get super, super courage in the age of technology. But that's a different video, so I'm going to move on. In the age of technology, dating and relationships, put some boundaries on that stuff. If you feel that your partner or spouse is always on the technology they can't seem to break that habit, then you guys need to establish some boundaries to say, you know what, when we are together for X amount of time, does it have to be an everyday thing? No. But maybe, you know what, three times out of the week, we need to make sure that you and I are connecting. That gives them four days. That actually gives them a, the majority, that actually gives them the majority of the week for you guys not to be connecting, right? But you have to put in some time with each other without technology interrupting and I'm still learning this myself because sometimes you know you get into the flow of things you want to finish your thing and then your spouse is coming or your boyfriend or whatever they're coming at you and they're like hey we need to talk and you're like dang I really need to get this thing done so I get it I'm not 100% there myself I'm still a work in progress myself but I do make a um, conscious habit to say you know what I actually have my phone in my hand let me sit my phone down not only am I sitting my phone down I'm making sure that I'm putting it face down down so if i do get another message or email or whatever it is so i can get my own endorphin rush that i don't see it in that moment because i want to give my husband the time and attention that he needs i want to even give my daughter the time and attention that she needs i mean she actually trying to be a part of this video i'm sure y'all can hear her a little bit because she, she she writing she's sitting right next to me um, <laughs> cool it so um yes but in the age of technology just be aware. Be aware. That's all I'm saying. Just being aware. In the age of technology, I know it's very tempting to go behind the person that you're dating, to go behind 
your spouse, your partner, and snoop, but don't do that. Don't do it. Because I totally believe it, and I say it all the time. What you, what you do in the dark, see? That's her right there. What you do in the dark will definitely come to light. And so you really don't need to snoop. And also, if you don't trust your partner, then that's, that's, that's a different video. That's like the foundation. If you don't trust your partner and you feel like you need to snoop anyway, that is... That's a huge issue anyway. That is something that needs to be addressed. And if you feel like the relationship can be worked on and both of you are in agreement that the relationship can be worked on and is worth fighting for, then you have to figure out a way to start building that trust up. And as a side note, if you were the person who actually broke the trust, then you have to be super uber duper. Yes, I said that super uber duper patient because you're the one who broke down a piece of the foundation. You put the crack in there. So mending it, it's going to be some annoying days for you who broke it, okay? Finally, in the age of technology, give the person that you're dating, give the person that you are in a relationship with the benefit of the doubt. Because just because something doesn't feel right doesn't necessarily, it's not 100% across the board that what you think it is, is what's actually happening. It could be something completely innocent. It could be something completely different from what your imagination is doing to you. So give your partner the benefit of the doubt. I'll say it again. If you have a trust issue, that is a different video. And that is part of the foundation of your relationship. So if there is doubt, if there is an issue with trust, then that is something that definitely needs to, uh, to be addressed. All right, fam, so if you made it this far in the video, definitely go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if this is your very first time here, or if you have been coming for a while, but you have yet to subscribe to my channel, then definitely go ahead and subscribe to my channel because here at I Love Me, 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 I'm supplying you guys with all of the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships. And now this is video two of the week. And guess what? If you are interested in becoming the winner this week, then definitely go ahead and leave me a comment below. Give me thumbs up. And yes, you do have to be subscribed to my channel. I didn't say that um, on Sunday's video. So yes, you have to be subscribed to my channel. And I do know if you subscribe to my channel or not. And um, you have to make a comment on every video that I release for the week, which is four total. So this is video two. If you just now finding this one, but you want to, you know, be entered into the contest. And the contest is, because I didn't even mention it uh, thus far. The contest is one winner each week. I will give a 30-minute discovery call to let you ask as many questions as you want to get it off your chest. And then at the end of that call, we'll see if we want to work together on a consistent basis, at least for a period of time, to get you all the way together, to get that relationship all together. Because maybe something that I am addressing currently is not something that you are actively going through. And so you need some help. So you have to, I will say it again, you have to be subscribed to my channel, like the video, and you have to leave a comment because that is the only way I will pick a winner. You have to, again, all four videos for the week, and I'll choose a winner randomly. So again, if you're interested in that, definitely go ahead and comment, and I will see you in the next video so you can comment, and um, good luck. <laughs>